independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'm a proud Democrat, and I'll be proud to carry the banner of our party into the general election. So it's with great honor and humility, I accept this nomination for president of the United States of America. But while I'll be a Democratic candidate, I will be an American president. I'll work hard for those who didn't support me, as hard for them as I did for those who did vote for me. This is not a partisan moment. This must be an American moment. Joe Biden last night. Solid. Should be. In months and years, really, to prepare for this moment. He delivered. Less about Trump. Few things, but you expect that. More about him personally. More about positivity. No policy talk. Don't expect. This is a rah-rah moment. This is not a moment of policy. Nobody wants to get wonky in any of this. He delivered what he had to deliver last night. He did. He was steady, didn't have any of those moments. The question is, was the bar set so low because of the way that he's been before? And because we look over at Trump, Trump gives a great speech in front of a crowd, but he doesn't deliver that moment that we look for sometimes with people. I love Trump in front of a crowd. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's different than maybe... You know, you look at somebody like Obama, who was, it was transcending the way he was in front of Craig. He was a great orator. Reagan was a great orator in front of it. He could command an audience. Trump commands it in a much different way. But I thought he did what he had to do last night. He did what he had to do. He delivered the things that he had to deliver. Because in a moment like this, it's about trying to, to show all of the positives, trying to be the person that's not the doom and gloom. I spoke to a couple people that have been out there traveling with the Democrats yesterday, a couple news people from ABC, and one of them, Alex Stone, and he and I were talking, and he said, you know, the, the Democrats that he's been speaking to that have been the uppers inside of the, the party, Really woke up yesterday with a, we spent three days bashing Trump and no time talking about anything positive. We spent, we we missed the mark, and I think they realized that. And last night, he delivered what he had to deliver in a very solid way. You know, I'm just talking, people are going to say, that people are going to read it, you're, you're a Biden lover. You're a Trump hater. I'm talking about delivering the speech that he had to deliver because and the Democrats were always going to praise it and the Republicans will find ways to pick it apart. Next week, it'll be the exact opposite. The Republicans will talk about how great Trump was and the Democrats will talk about how evil and bad he is. That's what you do in this situation. But for the candidates themselves, it's about trying to reach the people with a message that can hopefully resonate across the party boundaries. Four historic crises, perfect storm, the worst pandemic in over 100 years, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the most compelling call for racial justice since the 60s, and the undeniable realities of climate change. America is at a time of real peril. We can choose a path of becoming angrier, less hopeful, more divided, a path of shadow and suspicion, or we can choose a different path and together heal, unite. This is a life-changing election. This will determine what America is going to look like for a long, long time. We'll see. We'll see. But I give him a solid grade. That was the speech that he had to deliver. And I think the thing is, like I said, we talk about, is was the bar low? We joke about, like, was he going to walk off the stage? Was he going to get stuck inside of the, the, you know, the curtains? Is he, you know, those kind of things. Because let's be honest. Biden's had those moments. Biden has shrunk when the spotlight has been on him. Biden has struggled, and it's not just over the last couple of months. This has been something that's been ongoing for two and a half, three decades. When the opportunity was in front of him, he's that guy that has great numbers in the regular season, and when the playoffs come, he shrinks in the moment. Last night, he held steady, but there's always a but. 
There was nobody punching back. I was telling producer Anthony, we were talking about this. We were going over stuff earlier. I said, everybody looks great shadow boxing. Everybody does, right? So you see those pros in there, and they're shadow boxing. They look great. They're working up a sweat. But nobody's punching back. Last night was all about this is who I am. Here's the positives, but there's no policies. Nobody's challenging the record or lack of record. Talked about Russia. I'll be a president who will stand with our allies and friends and make it clear to our adversaries the days of cozying up to dictators is over. Under President Biden, America will not turn a blind eye to Russian bounties on the heads of American soldiers. Nor will I put up with foreign interference in our most sacred democratic exercise, voting. And I'll always stand for our values of human rights and dignity. Will we be the generation that finally wipes out the stain of racism? I believe we're up to it. I believe we're ready. Obama, very lackluster record with Russia. Trump's record on Russia has been way harder. Here's the thing, and I tell people this all the time when it comes to to Trump. You guys out there who think, you know, Russia, 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 the only reason he got elected, blah, 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 blah. Trump has been way harder if you actually look, and this is facts over feelings. I tell everybody, you don't want Trump to be hard on Russia. People want Trump to be hard on Putin. That's what they want. Because if you look at the record, what has he done compared to what Obama did? A lot lot more. But people want him to be more about Putin. And they talk about Russia. No, they want it to be about Putin. That's what they want. Others last night were very... Obviously congratulatory towards him. Some, as Van Jones puts it, take a breath. And that sound that you hear all across the country is the sound of Democrats exhaling. So, you know, sometimes when he gets out there, you're afraid he's going to make a mistake. He's going to have a gaffe. Expectations are just so low. And then he came out there and he gave an extraordinary speech. And it was authentic. And we were prepared for it to be a terrible speech. As long as he didn't embarrass himself, we were going to come out here and praise it. You don't have to make nothing up tonight. Joe Biden did that thing tonight. Unbelievable. That's the question that I asked earlier. Is the bar set so low? That we think to ourselves, he came out and delivered on teleprompter the speech that he had to deliver? The bar low. Chris Wallace. Oh, I thought it was an enormously effective speech. Remember, Donald Trump has been talking for months about Joe Biden as mentally shot, a captive of the left. And yes, Biden was reading from a teleprompter, but I thought that he blew a hole, a big hole in that characterization. Character is on the ballot. Decency is on the ballot. He talked about a different path for the country. It seems to me that after tonight, Donald Trump is going to have to run against a candidate, not a caricature. But we really don't know. He delivered a speech. Great. But is it the speech that won people over? Well, he'll get a nice bump. But the reality is, at the end of the day, we're not going to know anything really to get a look at these two people until they're on stage. And they'll, they'll debate. What's it like when somebody's throwing punches back? We know Trump. Throws a lot of punches. We know that. He throws a ton of punches. And he takes a ton of punches. And he's in it to win it. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. It will be. But I thought overall, he delivered a really damn good speech. We're going to talk about later how I wish in so many ways... Voting and politics was a la carte. Was a la carte. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Text the program. Hope all is well with you. Got some great audio from Trump. Some, some... Trump is the see a squirrel. 
He is, ooh, look at that. Ooh, squirrel. Ooh, squirrel. <laughs> Some of the stuff he said yesterday. It was just classic Trump. Just bizarre, wacky, all over the place. Not measured. It's just that's sometimes, you know, you sit there and you think to yourself, he drives me crazy. He's maddening. He is his own worst enemy and his own best friend and best salesman. And then sometimes he'll just say something. and You're like, I didn't even know where that came from. (laughs) How we even got to this point is beyond me. My pillow. Sleep well. Sleep better. Bogo going on right now. Buy one, get one free. So what a BOGO is, is exactly what I say. So you pick out, yeah, I want a MyPillow. They're going to ship you a second MyPillow for free. So you want to get a mattress topper. They'll say, and send you a second one for free. Giza sheets, towels, whatever it is, you buy one, you get one free. 60-day money-back guarantee, 10-year warranty. Everything's made right here in the USA. It is awesome. It really, really is. My son has his. I've got mine. The family's got theirs. It is great. You will love it. Go to MyPillow.com. When you check out, there is a lit new radio listener special. You type in code Benson. On the way out, if you order Mike Lindell's book, he's going to ship everything for free and give you a $25 gift card towards your next purchase. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. I, you, he, she, it. Lucy is a girl. Point of personal privilege. Please do not use gendered language to address everyone. <laughs> Shut up, boo. Ain't nobody got time for this. This is the Chad Benson Show. This time next year, I hope the virus is in check and that we're not fearing but hoping again. I am confident that this time next year, we will have a president who provides this country with real leadership, not just tweets. I hope we all get back to work. There'll be two Americans who I will be happy to say are unemployed, Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump. I want to see a president of the United States who can look a trans woman in the eye and tell her her rights are worth protecting. This time next year. This time next year. This time next year, I want to see Joe Biden in the Oval Office. There you go. This time next year. Who knows what it's going to be like? If I'd have told you a year ago that Trump would be behind in the polls anywhere between 10 and 5 to 10 percent, you know? So, I mean, and he is. Let's be real. And But most polls, even if you have the margin of error, let's just say five points, which is normally it's, it's two to three points. But say the margin of error is five. In most polls, Trump's losing. And the reason... That you could say simply is COVID. It's, it, the craziness, the lunacy, the the all of that stuff. If the economy's still rolling along, I don't think we're having this conversation. We're saying to ourselves, he's going to win another one. But COVID came along, and people don't like the response. Even if he's done, like here's the thing too. Even if you like Trump, we we want to be able to point to people and say. You're the top dog, and because of that, this is a giant mess, and it's not going well, and I'm blaming you for it. Because we want to hold somebody responsible, as we should, and sometimes we give too much credit where you don't deserve that much credit, and sometimes we put too much of the responsibility on somebody. And I think all too often that happens in everything. Sports is a perfect place. Yeah, there's some bad coaches out there, but if you give a bad coach bad players all the time, even a good coach isn't going to save something. They may save something once in a great while. They may make it better, but they may not make it a winner. And Trump hasn't fared well. I don't blame him entirely, but a year from now, we're we're going to be looking, I think, at a much different world. I think we'll have sorted out this coronavirus or we'll have learned to live with it and got back to the 
pre-coronavirus world, we may still have some some things that we're doing, mask, some still some social distancing, but I think we'll be back in in some way, shape, or form because I think eventually everybody's got their breaking point, and even states are starting to look around and saying we're going to have to start getting this thing back out there because the feds are going to you know how much money can the feds give us? And that, I think a lot of states are thinking, well, if you know Biden gets in there, he's going to just fund the hell out of us. That's not a good thing either. So there, there's a lot of things that, that are going to happen. And there's still a lot of time. Even though it's coming fast, we now live in a world where we, 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 no, we no longer measure in days. We measure in hours when it comes to how quick things go. So we'll see what happens in the next three months. I still think both of them are going to have moments of, of, of solid greatness and I think both of them are going to have serious slip-ups. I do. And the coronavirus has not gone anywhere. And it's still here. And that's something to think about. The coronavirus vaccine may not be available to most people until as late as next June. It comes as positive signs start to emerge amid the pandemic. New data from Johns Hopkins University showing cases in the U.S. are on the decline for a fourth straight week. And that's good. Are we building up T-cell immunity? It's a huge possibility that we're starting to do that, which is the the immunity kind of like you've been exposed to it so much, you already have a certain amount of immunity built up into it. I I think it's also mutating. And and if you go and read a bunch of stuff, which I have, the doctors will tell you, and I've spoken to a lot of epidemiologists, and they've all said the same thing, and virologists that hey. When it starts to mutate, the copy's never as good as the copy before, and, and in a lot of ways, this thing could be weakening itself, and we're treating it better. So that's good. That's a good thing. But just because we get a vaccine in the coming months doesn't mean it's everybody gets it tomorrow. It is going to take a while to make its way. And we'll still have hot spots next year that crop up from time to time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show's your Twitter. So Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. In this dark moment, I believe we're poised to make great progress again. We can find the light once more. I believe there's only one way forward. As a united America, united in our determination to make the coming years bright. Are you ready? I believe we are. For love is more powerful than hate. Hope is more powerful than fear. And light is more powerful than dark. This is our moment. This is our mission. May history be able to say that the end of this chapter of American darkness began here tonight. American darkness. Because we're evil? Is that, is that what it is? I'm just, I'm curious. You know, yesterday we talked a bit about Tom Brennan, the sportscaster who's uh, the other day dropped a homophobic slur when he thought he was off air. And uh, he's done. I mean, he's probably, you know, and I asked, is there forgiveness? And somebody says, we need to end. This is the worst time in history. And I said, this is the worst time in history. This is the best time in history. Racism's everywhere. No, it's not. It's not everywhere. Yes, it is. Really? Have a Klan meeting today. See how many people show up. Five, 10, 20? See how many anti Klan people show up? Hundreds? Thousands? Absolutely. Well, it's a misogynistic society. Really? Why is that? How, show me how it's a misogynistic society. Men rule everything. That's changing. Men had a head start. No, no denying that. Women are graduating college faster. They're making more money to start out faster. It's, it's, it's not set up that way. We're living in the best time in history. It's not the darkest time. Trust me, there are darker times in history. Uh, people are going to look back in 100 years and go, well, that's kind of like, like we look back on Little House in the Prairie. <laughs> I watched a commercial the other day. 
because I was watching my uh, my gun smoke and and on the channel during the day they play all kinds of old stuff. And one of them is the Waltons, and they're like, "Let's go outside and catch fireflies." Like that was their Wi-Fi and Netflix. They're going outside catching fireflies. <laughs> The best time in history. We have some issues. Those issues, everybody thinks those issues are everywhere. That's 24-7. It's not the darkest time. It isn't. I thought Biden's speech last night was really good. But my question in reality, how do you unite the country? Because for the past four years, both parties have been yelling at the other party's base, telling them how horrible they are. Your party, Biden, has been telling everybody how crappy everything is, even though the economy was booming. Even though life was good, right? We we weren't in a, a mess of wars. Trump was pulling people out. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was it? Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of doing that. Things seemed to be pretty good. The chaos was there. The reality TV was there. But most of that was manufactured chaos. Trump manufactures his own chaos. Life was pretty good under Obama. People say, oh, he was... I had... A good life under Obama. And I'm going to be honest, you guys. I don't put much stock into either party in my happiness in life. And if you do that, that's foolish. I think you make your own luck in life. I think you'll get some breaks. But the reality is, is, you know, I don't I don't care who's president. I've been I've done well under Republicans and, and Democrats. And I've. Sucked under both as well. (laughs) Had hard times. Put too much stock in people that somehow, magically, if this person's president or this person's governor or this person's my senator, that they're going to change everything. Doesn't work that way. But it's not the darkest time in history. It's not a season of darkness. The season of darkness, I don't care who's president, if there is any season right now, and there is a, a a season when you look at the coronavirus. But outside of that, life was pretty damn good. Well, what about all the racism and social injustice? We all want to talk about what's going on now with social injustice and, and all the racism. And we never look where we came from. Where have we come from? How have we improved? Where are things getting better? It's always about the negative, never about the positive. And it's always about let's just look at the negative without not only looking at the positive, but how we can progress continually on things. Sad. It's very, very sad that that's the way that we look at everything. But we've also have put ourselves in a point in the world of politics where what we do in politics now is it's so much easier. So much easier to attack rather than to push up. So much easier to say, you suck, rather than saying, ah, you know, you're doing what you're doing, but let me show you what I'm doing. Let me show you how I think my beliefs, my programs would be better. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can... Text the program as well. I thought this was hilarious. Look, for all the craziness of Trump, and we all can agree there is craziness in Trump. And I don't mean crazy as insane. I just mean he's all over the place. So yesterday, doing what he does, he's in Pennsylvania. He's campaigning. There's people out there. Oh, my goodness. Off the script he goes. And he'll remind us that he was born in Scranton, but, you know, he left like 70 years ago, right? He left a long time ago. He wasn't born, you know, 
I view it differently. He'd say he was born here, but he left when he was like eight, nine, or ten. So he left. He abandoned Scranton. His family had something to do with that, you know, his parents. But he left Scranton. I mean, he keeps talking about, I was born in Scranton. I lived in Scranton for a few years, and then he left. He abandoned Pennsylvania. He was here for a short period of time, and he didn't even know it. And today, it's amazing. It goes around in a circle. He still doesn't know it. <laughs> okay, so now, now it really picks up steam. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, squirrel. I want to get that mosquito out of here. I don't like it. They'll say it's cruelty to animals. <laughs> I don't like No, it's true. They, they have, they were saying the other night, the shark. They were saying, oh, sharks, we have to protect them. I said, wait a minute, wait. They actually want to remove all the seals in order to save the shark. I said, wait a minute, don't you have it the other way around? No, I'm not a big fan of sharks either. I don't know how many votes am I going to lose. I have people calling me up, sir, we want to have a fund to save the shark. Call save the shark. I say, no, thank you. I have other things I can contribute to. awesome we need the sharks by the way we need the sharks and the reason there are so many damn seals and they're having to cull the seals and the pinniped population is because uh for years they killed all the sharks especially the great white sharks and without the great white sharks there was nothing to eat the seal population and the seal population exploded <laughs> so now we have uh a lot of animals that uh well are overtaking certain things but it's just, here he goes. Boom, I'm over here. Look at this. I don't like some mosquitoes. You know what else I don't like? But I'm not going to kill the mosquito. And he just, he's all over the place. That's, you just sit there and you start laughing at Trump. It's great. Well, well you shouldn't laugh at that. That's insane. No, it's just Trump being Trump. He's all over. Like, I, I say this for the chaos of Trump. And he creates a lot of it. But that's what also humanizes him. One of the things about politicians, and, and this is where Hillary, what was one of the bigger, besides all the fact that, you know, even people in the Democratic Party thought this is the most corrupt people in the world. But despite all of, of that, the biggest part with Hillary is, when it comes to the average voter, she, just, she didn't resonate. because She didn't feel like she was a human being. There was no relatability at all. And most politicians feel like there's no relatability. Because everything is scripted. Everything is to the T scripted. Ron Burgundy, whatever you write on there, he's going to read kind of thing. And with Trump, you're like, well, that guy talks kind of like we do. My life's not on a teleprompter. And that humanized him. That's why there's so much emotion for Trump. Most politicians, people don't feel that kind of emotion because they don't feel like they're human. You can't relate. Even if you like somebody, you don't really relate to them. But Trump, you can kind of relate to. You hate him with a passion or you love him. <laughs> and because? Because he's humanized himself. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter. You can tweet at me. You can text the program as well. California's on fire yesterday, and Gavin Newsom was supposed to be doing the DNC. One of he was supposed to be one of the featured speakers. Obviously, California right now as bad as the coronavirus is that second compared to the wildfires that are going on so he was driving pulled over smoke and everything tried to make it very dramatic which he did and California's on fire but the fire's out of control producer Anthony is got bags ready and packed because where he lives in Sacramento there's a chance he may have to flee out near Vacaville and stuff he may have to bounce so that's how big this stuff is and Gavin take it away this is not where I expected to be speaking here tonight. I'm about a mile or so away from one of over 370 wildfires that we're battling here in the state of California. Just coming off a, a record heat wave uh, that led to 130 degree temperatures, the uh, highest temperature ever recorded in California. The hots are getting hotter. The dries are getting drier. Climate change is real. If you are in denial about climate change, come to California. So he does that. And then... This. Uh, just today, the President of the United States 
uh, threaten the state of California, 40 million Americans uh, to defund our efforts on wildfire suppression because he said we hadn't raked enough leaves. You can't make that up, nor can you make up the fact we're involved in over 90 lawsuits with the Trump administration on clean air, on clean water, on endangered species, on pesticides. There's so much at stake in this election. Lawsuit after lawsuit. The raking the leaves thing, I'll, I'll say one thing. California has got a lot of crazy regulations. I mean, lived there most of my life. Regulations where you can't go out and you can't dry cut areas and do certain things. They've, they've made themselves at times a fire hazard while trying to save said environment. And they've talked about that. And when you have as many lightning strikes as they've had in certain areas... Dry brush everywhere, because it has been very dry. Out here in Arizona, monsoon season, last night was the first storm we've had. And we're almost finishing up monsoon season. It's the first storm. And at my house, it rained very little. Certain parts of Phoenix got drenched. Got a lot of wind. So it's ugly. Absolutely. They're battling each other. Welcome to the world. And if, if Biden's president, I can guarantee you the states that are red, Texas, if it stays red, uh, uh, you know, even if it doesn't, even if they vote for Biden, it's still Texas. Doesn't mean it's going to be blue. They uh, they'll sue the Biden administration when Biden comes in and starts putting regulations on regulation on regulation. That's the way it works. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. Raycon's best ear buds around. I've got mine right here. Love my Raycons. Wear them every day when I'm video editing, if I'm going out to work. You know what I like to do when I go out to work out and stuff? Like, I'll go hit golf balls, and it's just great because I don't have any dangling wires. I don't have any stems. They go right in my ears. Perfect fit. You don't even feel like they're there. Seamless Bluetooth pairing. It's amazing. I never have to worry about them falling out. I absolutely love, love, love my Raycons. Here's the thing. Normally, you'd spend... Two, two fifty for earbuds like this. Better sound quality, better design, better comfort, nice noise isolating fit. Well under a hundred bucks with these E twenty fives. Get yours today. Save big another fifteen percent. Go to buyraycon. dot com slash chad. Buyraycon. dot com slash chad. Save fifteen percent on the best earbuds around. Buyraycon. dot com slash chad. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. Unhinged stars Russell Crowe as a guy having a very bad day. I don't think you really know what a bad day is. The violent R-rated thriller was directed by Derek Bort. It's hugely exciting to be the first film to open. And yeah, it brings with it a lot of pressure. But he tells me there's more pressure on theaters to make sure they're safe for crowds in the COVID era. And from the protocols he's seen. I mean, my comfort level is I'm going to be at the theater Friday night. Because he says Unhinged is the perfect movie for right now. It's an adrenaline-fueled thrill ride that will take you away away from the problems that we're all facing every day these days. You're going to learn through violence and retribution. Yeah. Now, few theaters are going to be opening across the country. I think AMC is going to open up 100 or so. They did that yesterday, 15-cent tickets. They were playing older movies like Ghostbusters, things of that nature. They're going to have this. Uh, certain states have their own movie chains that, that are opening up in, in limited release. So it's limited and then you're going to get a lot more of it opening up next week. And then you're going to actually start to potentially see real movies popping up quicker and quicker and quicker. The next quote-unquote movie you would say, what's a big-ish movie, would be Bill and Ted Face the Music, August 28th. And that would be probably, and everything's going to be kind of limited based on, you know, what's out there, what's available. Because there's not a lot of places, like even out here in Arizona, we two theaters in Phoenix that are open. That's it. Two theaters in Phoenix. No more than that. And they had to apply. 
It was is the way they went about it. It's, it's a tough, you know, thing to get itself ready. And so we'll see. But, yeah, having a real opportunity potentially to go see a movie, that's what I'm excited about. I haven't eaten out. I was telling everybody, I have not eaten out at a restaurant where I sat down and somebody said, babe, take your order since like February. That's crazy. And I haven't seen a movie since, I think I've seen one movie this year. Normally I'd probably be at, I'd be on my 30th movie. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us, text the program as well. Thought it was good last night. Now the real campaigning begins. The rah-rah is over. What do you do from here? What's Biden's next step? He's got to get out there. He can't just go back and be hiding Biden. He's got to get out there and start answering questions. He's got to get out there and start facing some punches. He's got to get out there in traffic, if you will. We'll see. 323-538-2423 at... Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, your Instagram. Chad Benson Show TV is your YouTube channel. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'm a proud Democrat, and I'll be proud to carry the banner of our party into the general election. So it's with great honor and humility, I accept this nomination for president of the United States of America. But while I'll be a Democratic candidate, I will be an American president. I'll work hard for those who didn't support me, as hard for them as I did for those who did vote for me. This is not a partisan moment. This must be an American moment. I thought he did well last night, Biden. I thought he did very well. He showed everything that had been missing from the Democratic convention. The convention for the Democrats has been... First of all, it's weird anyways. I don't expect I don't know what to expect next week with the Republicans. It could be flat, it could be totally <laughs> just totally wacky. I expect a little bit of all of that. But he delivered what he had to deliver last night. First of all, some confidence to people out there that even on the left side of uh, the aisle we're a little bit worried about Joe. Now, this is much different than being in it. This is much different than being in a debate, having to answer questions. You go out there, you have the teleprompter, you're able to read, you've had stuff prepared, you've gone over it, you've rewritten it, you've been planning for this your entire political life. Speeches like this. There was no Q&A. There was no questioning. This was all about a huge pep rally. We're going to beat state. That's that's it. But then they have to go play the game. And that's the next in this. But he did a good job. He did a very, very good job. I would give him an A-. minus. An A wasn't an A+. Plus. And I think part of that is just because the atmosphere was so weird. But all in all, he did what he needed to do. There was, remember, this was more about rah, rah, rah. More about Joe Biden, because we've been missing that. You watched the first three days, it was all about how much Trump sucks. And last night was more about Joe Biden, no policies, things of that nature, how he's going to get us out of all of this stuff. It's easy to say, I'm going to do this, this, and this. 
four historic crises, perfect storm, the worst pandemic in over 100 years, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the most compelling call for racial justice since the 60s, and the undeniable realities of climate change. America is at a time of real peril. We can choose a path of becoming angrier, less hopeful, more divided, a path of shadow and suspicion, or we can choose a different path and together heal, unite. This is a life-changing election. This will determine what America is going to look like for a long, long time. We're in peril. You ever notice that? We're always in peril. <laughs> We're in peril. The world's coming to an end. We're in peril. So hire me. <laughs> it's not. We're not in peril. We're in the economic situation because of COVID. Should it have been handled better? It absolutely should have been handled better. But armchair quarterback is much different than being inside of it. Armchair quarterbacking is way, way, way different. Plus, it's in our face 24-7, and we've been told since the beginning of the pandemic that this is essentially the worst thing in the history of ever. Like, you get this, you've got hours to live. And we all know that's a bunch of crap. I think when we're going to look back on this thing and go, mm, maybe we panicked a little bit too much. Maybe we did some things that we shouldn't have done. Maybe we overreacted. We could have made a few subtle changes that could have probably held some of this stuff down. E- we're not there yet. But at the end of the day, that's what you do. You've got to paint the picture that the person on the other side of the aisle, apparently, now that's how politics works, is the worst thing in history. And there's never been a worse time in history to live than now. Hello, America. I'm Andrew Yang. You might know me as the guy who ran for president talking about math and the future. That future is now. The pandemic has accelerated everything. If you're like me and my wife, Evelyn, you don't know if your child's school is going to reopen this fall. 72% of Americans believe that this is the worst time we have ever experienced. 42% of the jobs that have been lost will never return. We are in a deep, dark hole, and we need leaders who will help us dig out. I have gotten to know both Joe and Kamala on the trail over the past year. They will fight for us and our families every single day. Every single day. They're going to fight for us every single day. Every single day. That's what they're going to do. Worst time in history. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Worst time in the history of ever. Not the worst time in the history of forever. This is a speed bump. This is a moment in time. And it sucks right now. Some of it we've manufactured ourselves. Other parts we haven't handled well. But there are far worse times. Far worse times. We're going to be okay. But that's the whole point. You've got to paint the pictures of the worst time in history. I was saying last night, you know, somebody's like, could you vote for Joe Biden? I said, you know what? I could vote for Joe Biden. I could vote for Donald Trump. You know what I don't want to vote for anymore? Parties. I don't want to vote for parties. Because I look over and I say, you know, now I could have, my uncle, my uncle's a huge Trump fan. He's my best friend. He and I were talking yesterday, as we do. A massive Trump fan. He is super MAGA. He's like, I could have, I could vote for Joe Biden ten years ago, Joe Biden. Because I don't think I can vote for Joe Biden now. Because we got on the, the, we got on the topic of I could vote for a candidate. I can't vote for a party. Because parties have agendas. Well, don't candidates? Well, yes and no. Candidates want to win. But the party's agenda usually is only about said party. And in many cases, very little about even the people that vote for them. More about the people that give to them. They get caught up in special interests. They get caught up in identity politics. They get caught up in all kinds of wackiness. I can vote for a candidate, the a la carte voting, but I don't want to vote for parties. Because parties make things worse. Because their agenda usually only aligns with the lobbyist and the party itself. That's the reality of it. The fact that we do well
is mostly because people get through it and endure it and do it on its own. And the best thing that government ever can do is usually get a hell out of the way. Because when they get in the way, it's only because they've got to appease and please people. Because they've been feeding at the trough of so many other special interest donors, lobbyists, you name it, who all want something. And that's frustrating. I'd love to vote for a person and not a party. And this would be an independent is. The problem is, is where do you go at this point in time? Because I, I, I'm sitting there and we joke about the insanity of, of, the, the, of the far left. Right. We, 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 we joke about that because there's a lot to joke about. Let's be real. This is not a joke. And I tell everybody, I just can't vote for some of this insanity. So the LGBTQ caucus this week, one of the people on the caucus, J. Mai, a black, Vietnamese, transgender, non-binary, gender transcendent, mermaid, king, queen. was one of the people speaking, hoping to abolish the police, ICE, everything in between that you could think of, capitalism as well. Talking about, imagine a world where we live, where we don't have the police, where we don't have ICE, we don't have prisons, community care, and an abolitionist future. Would you give platforms to people that are talking about eliminating stuff and believes that they're a mermaid, and if you question that, you get yelled at and told how evil you are? If I came to you today, so let's say Producer Phil. What's your favorite animal, Producer Phil? Just throwing it out there. Let's go with a lion. If producer Phil comes to me today and says, I'm lion, I'm a king of the jungle, I'm the lion, you need to refer to me as King Humphrey, the lion of Arlington, because I believe I identify as that, I would say, we're having a conversation. <laughs> not trying to be me. Just being honest, right? Like if you're gonna, if they're, if they're and like yesterday, Steve Bannon got arrested by postal police. He's supposed to speak at the uh, the convention next week. You're like, really? They're gonna let the husband and wife team who was arrested in St. Louis, the ones who came out, the McCluskeys with their guns, they're gonna let them speak. And I'm like, really? That's the issue. Everybody takes people. They give them some sort of platform. And they tell them that, you know, it, 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 you're fine. Your voice is amazing. It, this, uh, it's insane. It is. And I'll call it out. Look, your best friend, if your mom tells you tonight she believes she's a 10th century Viking named Lothar the Great, You'd be like, what? It's, it's, it's crazy. I'm sorry. And everybody gives everybody a voice because they all feel that everybody should have a voice about everything. and their voice. At some point in time, you have a voice, and your voice is social media. You don't always deserve to sit at the captain's table. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter. You're a jerk, Chad. You're... You're mermaid phobic. <laughs> By the way, if you've ever read folklore, you go look at mermaids. Most of the time in real folklore, mermaids were bad. <laughs> they weren't. There's a show on about mermaids. And guess what? They're like sea vampires. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You know what's good? Wounded Paw. Amazing. 
awesome, incredible. Talk about an organization that gives, gives in so many ways. So what they do is they rescue animals. So you've got all of these 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 dogs in many places, and many places now are, are the shelters are or are non you know non kill. They don't rescue those dogs. They do rescue the dogs where they think if they were they couldn't adopt these out to just a regular person. And they take those dogs and they transform them from shelter dogs to service dogs. And they do that for our veterans, first responders, and the family. And what it does for them is amazing. For just the dog, but the people, their motto is to save a pause, to save a life. And it does that in so many ways. You can help. They need your donations. You can go to woundedpawproject.org. Find out how you can give. A donation of a vehicle is amazing. If it flies, floats. Doesn't matter. They'll take it. And you get a great tax-deductible gift. And the money from that, the proceeds, will go to protect and advocate and train these animals for veterans, first responders, and their family. WoundedPawProject.org. WoundedPawProject.org. Find out how you can get involved. WoundedPawProject.org. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Ugh. People are texting me and asking me, Chad, you're making that up about the transgender, non-baron, non-binary mermaid, king queen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> Spoke at the DNC's panel, the LGBT caucus. I just, I'm sorry. Find it odd. I know you can't say that anymore because people are like, oh, I got a kid. You hate mermaids. I mean, I'm mermaid phobic. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, what's trending? Steve Bannon is still trending. Big time. Bella Thorne still trending. Braden Harrington, 13 year old with a stutter, trending last night. Obviously, because Joe Biden has struggled in his time with the stutter. Head on over to the world of Twitter, and I'm sure all that's sw- trending is hate. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. BTS is trending. So uh, that's the uh, K-pop band. They've got a, a song called Dynamite. 20 minutes. 10 million Views. That's nuts. Meg, Megan Three Stallion said she was shot by Tony Lenez. I'm like, really? He's a hip hop star, and he has been identified as the shooter. I'm like, shooter of 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 Megan Stallion Three. Very interesting. So some of the things here. that are going on in the world of the internet. I'm still trying to figure out how does one even figure out how that they're a mermaid. Like, are you just sitting in the jacuzzi when they go? Yeah, this this is nice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Chad Benson Show. Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
in this dark womb. I believe we're poised to make great progress again. We can find the light once more. I believe there's only one way forward. As a united America, united in our determination to make the coming years bright. Are you ready? I believe we are. For love is more powerful than hate. Hope is more powerful than fear. And light is more powerful than dark. This is our moment. This is our mission. May history be able to say that the end of this chapter of American darkness began here tonight. Rousing. Much better, though. I'll tell you that. Joining us now is somebody who's had to endure all of it and then some. Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research. Follow Matt and Righty, Jim. All right, uh, Jim, last night was, at least when it came to Biden, it was all about Biden, very little about Trump. Great it. What'd you think of it? Oh, I would probably give it a B plus. Yeah. I think he gave See? a good speech. He had just a couple of minor, you know, uh, forgetfulness or, or, or miswords. But hey, he was reading a lot of text. And I'm sure anybody would. Even your professional anchors on television have a couple of missteps in a half an hour or 25 minute speech. By the way, I wanted to update him on the light being better than the dark. Not so much if you're a vampire, but. You know, I'm assuming maybe that wasn't one of the constituencies he was trying to address on that. No, it was a good speech. A lot of generalities, not a lot of specifics on what he's going to do. Um, I wasn't quite sure he was talking about these new taxes that the one per- new tax breaks, the one percent we're going to be getting down the road, which I don't quite understand what he was talking about. Nor does anybody else that I'd heard of. Um, Green New Deal. For green energy jobs, problem is right now in California, we've got a lot of green energy jobs, but we don't have a lot of power, and we've had rolling blackouts throughout the state because we are a state who has gone and relied a lot more on green energy and found out that if the wind doesn't blow, windmills don't work, and when it gets dark, solar power is not too productive. So I'm not sure. You might want to talk to Gavin Newsom about that, who was speaking last night, by the way, too. Yeah, he did. He spoke from the uh, side of the road because California's on fire. Uh, as we all know, it usually is on fire this time of year. So there wasn't a lot of specifics, but you don't do that here. This is I, I keep saying this is the this is your rah-rah speech. This is the speech where you, you, you pump the crowd up. This is the speech where you tell everybody that we're going to beat state. But then you've got to go out and do it. And it, not a lot of specifics. I didn't expect that. But now there's got to be some specifics. Now there has to be for Joe Biden not Haydn, but getting out there and starting to do things, which he hasn't done. What's he do from here? Yeah, no, they got to go on the road and campaign now as much as one can. I mean, he is lucky because of the COVID. He doesn't, you know, he's not going to be expected to be as out in much and as touching people as you would normally think of in a campaign. But yeah, he's going to need to be seen out there on on the on the road with with Kamala. And they're going to need to campaign a lot because that's what people are going to expect. And Trump is going to hound on him if he's hiding in the bunker or in the basement, as Trump keeps wanting to call out, call him out for. So they're going to need to start. I mean, they'll have till the uh, Labor Day as the traditional start of the uh, campaign season, because next week will be the Republicans. And then I have, everyone will get a week off and then we'll start right at Labor Day to kick the campaigns off. And we'll do the uh, final 60 or 65 days to the run to the uh, to Election Day. Yeah, which is uh, uh, it's that's that is going to be interesting. Talking to Jim Kennedy, the Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research, as he joins us recapping this, the the you know Biden speech. I think a lot of people thought it was good. Uh, it you know you prepare for something like this, and, and, and in all honesty, Jim, you and I we've talked about this before. It, it's tough to be in the spotlight, and Biden has been through the decades has shown that he shrinks in the spotlight because a lot of people do. I mean, it's like we were talking. I was talking to my buddy. I said Alex Rodriguez. Right. The one of arguably one of the greatest baseball players of all time. But when the spotlight came on and it was playoff time, he shrunk. Can he hold up when there's punches coming back at him, when he's got to answer serious questions? Because that's when he really starts to go back to Joe. Is he prepared for this? Well, if he's not prepared for it, he's not going to be president. And, if you know, it's not like he hasn't had 50 years to prepare for this. Remember, he has run for president before, and obviously not at this stage in the in the race. Um, and, you know, wasn't successful when he did run before. So it'd be interesting. He does have a temper at times. Um, the speech was kind of emotionally unst- – unstable is not the right word – uneven. 
last night where he kind of would go up and down in tenor and tone on it. Um, I don't know if he was just trying to show that he was engaged and emotional about certain things and then, you know, was trying to be calm and statesman about others. But he does have a temper and you can get underneath his um, skin a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm sure the Trump campaign will try to throw people out there that will bait him in questions, that will try to ask him questions that will irritate him. They're going to try to ask him questions about hunter biden probably um anything else that will set him off also the um you know the the other allegations that have been put out there against him so i'm sure they're going to try to you know bait him in, in questions and public appearances so we'll see if the better side of joe of joe's better angels can stay there and the a little bit temper side of joe doesn't come through yeah well that's that'll be if he calls you a, was it a dog pay a dog face pony soldier then it's then it's mm-hmm. on at that point in time yeah <laughs> uh, talking to Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research. Let's recap the week outside of the big speakers. The little things are, are where you want to hear, you know, that's where you're going to get more of the policy, the wonky stuff. Uh, it was very odd the way that they went about doing some of these things. But what's the Democrats have to do to get a message across? Because eventually in the next six months to a year, we're really going to emerge from this. And where do they go? to tell the people, hey, when we emerge from this, you want us, and this is what we're going to do for you. Right. Well, that's what you've got to convince them in the next 60 days of that, because, you know, you can't elect somebody in six months. You're going to elect them in the next 65, 70 days that you're going to want to elect us, and you're going to want to put our people in Congress, and you're going to want us to help flip the Senate, and you're going to want us to help, you know, take control of state legislatures uh, is because of this and this and this. And I think what they're going to hit hard on, which which they did in the convention, and Biden certainly did, is that Trump has been horrible. I mean, first of all, Trump bad, Biden good. But besides that, Trump has been bad on COVID. Well, 170,000 plus Americans dead, most cases in the world for COVID. And that, you know, he's not a leader and we're going to fix that. Though I don't know how without a vaccine you're going to fix that. Though there are some vaccines coming down the road, it looks like. Uh, but you've got to basically, you know, fix the COVID to fix the economy, to get everybody back to work with those that are. The problem is going to be is there's going to be a collective guilt coming out of this. And I mean, right now, 12% of the American businesses have failed and aren't coming back. And that number is not going to get smaller each day. And the Democrats are more in favor of locking down things and national mask mandates. And the mask mandate isn't necessarily a bad idea, but the locking down more so is going to be problematic because all that's going to do is make the economy worse. So they've got to present a measure of optimism while they're going to want to try to you know, hurt the economy more. And that's going to cost money. And we're already crossing close to $27 trillion in debt. And over the long term, we're going to wind up paying for this down the road three, five, ten years with the amount of debt that we're piling on. That's going to be problematic. Probably not something you need to address right now, but something's going to be a problem down the road. So for the Democrats, they've got to basically do both the optimism and the leadership. We are the people to get you through this, and we're the ones that are going to fix the problems going forward. Talking to Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research. All right, Jim, let's look uh, ahead to next week. Next week, the Republicans are going to take the stage. Uh, yeah, we're seeing some of the things that they're that they're going to do. I think they're going to be a little bit less is more. Uh, how do they go about trying to, I would say, top this? But the reality is, is uh, nobody knows. We're in a totally different world right now, so there is no topping it. I'm sure Trump will like the you know fireworks and all kinds of stuff. But what do they have to do? Outside of Trump to try to get people because they've got a lot of I mean, let's go over it. They've got serious issues in the Senate and same thing with the House. They've got some issues here. What do they do to start to gain some ground? Yeah, that's an interesting question, because you've got the problem of regardless of the Trump popularity level, um, you've still got to run, like you know, 435 House races and 33, 34 Senate races. Uh, the Senate is pretty tenuous because the Republicans are this time are the ones that have a lot of the um, seats that are up in the Senate versus Democrats back in 2018. Plus, yeah, the, I don't think there's a lot of chance of them taking the House back. So you've got to run a national campaign and then like a bunch of bunch of little cam- or a bunch of local campaigns, too. And a lot of districts even though maybe the state may be red or maybe the state may not be red, Trump is not popular. So they're going to have to run a kind of a, you know, yeah, uh, I may may have to distance myself from Trump. Of course, Trump doesn't like that. And Trump doesn't like to endorse those types of people. Then you've got the whole national campaign where you're going to have Trump and you've got to, you know, you've got to run those campaigns. Um, I would question whether or how much they're going to, how flashy of a show you want to put on. This is kind of still a somber time in America. 
And I think if they go too flashy, too glitzy, too um, too over the top, you know, maybe even too Trumpian, that might backfire on them. So I think you're going to need to take a tone and tenor is going to be important to this. Respect for America. We're a country that's lost a lot of people due to COVID. Um, you got to be careful what you do about touching on COVID because it brings up, you know, Trump's had 175,000 dead, and that's going to get connected back to him. It's going to get connected back to him either way. So I think tone and tenor is going to be important in the convention. Can't be too grandiose, can't be too over the top, which unfortunately is kind of one of Trump's characteristics. Hey, Jim, how do how, how do Republicans balance some of this stuff? Like here in Arizona, Ducey, who's a Republican governor, and everything was going smooth, COVID hit, and it's all gone to hell in a handbasket. And for the first five and a half years, he kept Trump kind of at arm's length. He didn't need Trump's help to get reelected. The state was going like gangbusters. He put money away. He didn't give money to teachers. He's done a lot of different things. Over the last several months since this thing started, he's really started to embrace Trump. He's brought him in. He's done stuff. People have turned on him here. Republicans have to figure out a way to walk that fine line because there's a lot of people out there that want Trump gone but want the Republicans to hold on to the Senate, like the Lincoln Project. Their dream is to get rid of Trump and to strengthen the Senate and get back the House, that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, they've uh, they've been endorsing candidates in primaries, too, against um, some of the people that Trump has, has been endorsing in the primaries. But yeah, I mean, here in California, yeah, we're the quintessential example of that. How the heck in a state that, that you know would literally burn Trump, not just an effigy, they'd literally burn him if he showed up in the state, I think. Uh, well, how do you run as a Republican in California? That's incredibly tough. You've got one of the key center races down there with uh, with, with Kelly versus McSally. Um, that's probably going to be a flip. It looks like the Republicans are probably going to lose that one. Uh, I think you've been telling me everything, you know, from what I've heard is yeah. that that's just not anywhere McSally is going to pull that one out. Um, even though she's a great person, she's a, uh, one of the first female fighter pilots, if I remember properly. She is though, the first I think, female yes, fighter pilot. Oh, she was the first. Okay, I thought she was one of the first, yeah. Um, I think basically... Unfortunately, the, the situation with his wife, the tragedy with his wife and being an astronaut, unfortunately, probably trumps uh, being the first female fighter pilot. No pun intended there. Um, and she's unfortunately probably going to lose. California's been really tough. There's a lot of hope that a lot of the Republicans in Orange County are going to win again. Uh, I know there's been money this time by the Republican camp, uh, congressional campaign people throwing money in those races. Uh, one of them is the one that's uh, trying to get the uh, – uh, CA48, which is the Dana Rohrbacher's old seat back. Um, Michelle Steele is running, who is Sean Steele, the national RNC delegate for California's wife, um, who happens to be a Korean um, American woman, is running in that district. Uh, but tough race, pretty much even right now. But in California, yeah, it's really tough. And a lot of the states are like that. In Illinois, New York, the very blue states, how do you get a Republicans elected is a very tough thing. You really kind of have to run a, run away from Trump in many of those states because that's not going to help you. A lot of these people, anybody who's going to consider endorsing Trump in the congressional races is not going to be people that a lot of the blue people are going to vote for. Absolutely. Jim, uh, we'll have some more fun next week. You have a good weekend. Take a deep breath. And God bless you for watching that. So uh, we didn't have to. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. At Chad Benson Show Twitter. Follow him at Righty Jim. Telling you guys, the mermaid thing still making me laugh. If you're a Republican, uh, you know, like McSally here, this is the state. They look at Arizona. They've already got a senator that is now. I mean, this was a dead red state. It was a close race in in 2016. They think they're going to flip the state. And I've been saying since I've got here, I think the state's going blue. They're like, it's going to be purple. I said, I think it's going to go blue. And. Even in the state that was once very dead red, state politics wise is becoming more and more purple. They look at this, the money that's pouring in here against Sally and Kelly is huge. And they think they're going to have two senators from Arizona that are going to be blue. That's huge. That is. And there are other places they're picking and choosing and putting their money in. And they think they're going to take the Senate. It's a possibility. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at me, Masterclass. How would you like to learn, I don't know, how to skateboard from Tony Hawk? How to cook from Gordon Ramsay? That's what Masterclass is all about. I love it. Learn how to play a little chess in a way that I never thought before because Kasparov's teaching me. Phil Ivey going to teach you some, some poker 
It's about the greatest, the masters at what they do, teaching you, and it's incredible. They're broken down in 20 individual classes, about 10 minutes apiece. You consume it at your own pace. They've even got things like downloadable reference guides and and all kinds of amazing things that you can go to to print out and to follow along. You do it at your own pace, but it is incredible. Right now, I'm going to save you big. I want you, uh, more people in the last three or four days say, I can't believe all the cool stuff with Masterclass. It's amazing. Check out Masterclass. For my listeners right now, 15% off an annual membership, go to masterclass.com slash Benson, masterclass.com slash Benson. It's incredible. Masterclass.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. One of the few new series shot during the pandemic about the pandemic is Love in the Time of Corona. In it, real-life husband and wife Leslie Odom Jr. and Nicolette Robinson play a couple trying to conceive in a stressful world. They're trying to have a baby in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement, and how that is affecting their relationship and the conversations that they're having and their friendships, all of that stuff. The series follows several couples and friends. It was shot in their houses, and it debuts this weekend on Freeform before heading to Hulu. Ooh, that's where we are. You know, what's interesting is yesterday, Comedy Central dumped... uh, Drunk History, Tosh, which has been super successful for them, and they're moving to animation. And one of the big reasons they're doing that, because we've been in talks with them, my uncle and I have a few things, projects that are out there for them and and for Netflix, and Netflix is doing the same thing. They're looking all over because animation is the one thing where you don't need studios. You don't need a lot of stuff. Everything can be done by computer. On top of that, one of the things they've been talking about is Animation, you can get away with anything. You can't get away with in the human side of stuff. And they like that. There's less controversy in some of these things. And you can do it out of your house. I've done tons of animation and stuff out of my home studio. It's nuts. It's easier, it's cheaper, and you can get away with a lot of stuff. 323-538-24. <sighs> 23. Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter. So you go there at Chad Benson Show. Check out the Instagram. Chad Benson Show TV is where the YouTube is. Feel free to tweet and text at me. Woo! Feeling good. Oh, cause it's Friday, baby. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts. Independent life. This is Chad Benson. I'm a proud Democrat, and I'll be proud to carry the banner of our party into the general election. So it's with great honor and humility I accept this nomination for president of the United States of America. But while I'll be a Democratic candidate, I will be an American president. I'll work hard for those who didn't support me, as hard for them as I did for those who did vote for me. This is not a partisan moment. This must be an American moment. Yeah, good speech. Good speech. Well, I don't think it is a a transcendent speech, but for a lot of people out there, especially people on the left, yes, they were always going to say it was a great speech, but in reality, Van Jones said it best. That sound that you hear 
all across the country is the sound of Democrats exhaling. So, you know, sometimes when he gets out there, you're afraid he's going to make a mistake. He's going to have a gaffe. Expectations are just so low. And then he came out there and he gave an extraordinary speech. And it was authentic. And we were prepared for it to be a terrible speech. As long as he didn't embarrass himself, we were going to come out here and praise it. You don't have to make nothing up tonight. Joe Biden did that thing tonight. Unbelievable. But it shows you, though, he said it, the bar was so low. It was so low. It was a good speech. Not, you know, it, it wasn't all that Van Jones is saying because you set the bar low. It's like, wow. It's like you go out and play golf with somebody and they tell you the whole time, you know, you're thinking, oh, you know, this guy's kind of goofy, this, that, and the other. And you, the, the bar's set really low. And then, you know, he or she tees off on the first hole. And they hit it 270 yards straight down the middle, and they go and par the hole, and their swing looks fine. And they're like, well, I didn't expect much. They're not going to join the PGA Tour. But when the bar set so low, anything that wasn't what we've seen gaff-wise from Joe, not just in recent memories, and there's a difference, too. I'm, I'm going to say this right now. The difference between gaffs the difference between making, you know, mistakes and, and, and oops, I can't believe that kind of Chevy Chase, you know, remember back in the day, you know, where he was a physical comedian where, well, I'll, the, the, the difference between those things and the stuff that's happened recently are, 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 are totally separate because people have asked certain questions about the mental capabilities of Joe last night was easy it was the biggest speech of his life he'd never gotten to this point yet he's always wanted to be to this point he's had months to prepare he's had months to get ready for it he's had months to start to craft how he wanted to paint the picture of himself and somewhat the vision of where he wants to take the country he's had months of that But it's a pep rally. Trump and the Republicans will have a pep rally next week. And you've got to play the game. Let's go beat state. The pep rally, people are cheering, they're yelling, it's awesome. You've worked out all the plans, you got everything on the board, the whole nine yards, we're going to do this, they're going to do that, the whole... And then the ball snapped. And everything is real and it's live. And they're hitting back. That didn't happen last night, but he did do what he had to do, which was deliver a speech that made people go, all right, but when the bar's low, (laughs) what's that say? Oh, I thought it was an enormously effective speech. Remember, Donald Trump has been talking for months about Joe Biden as mentally shot, a captive of the left. And uh, yes, Biden was reading from a teleprompter, but I thought that he blew a hole, a big hole in that characterization. Character is on the ballot. Decency is on the ballot. He talked about a different path for the country. It seems to me that after tonight, Donald Trump is going to have to run against a candidate, not a caricature. Chris Wallace. Like I said, I thought he did a good job last night. Republicans will look and he'll get a bump. I'm not worried about if Joe had his druthers where he would take the country. Because Joe's not as radical as they're trying to paint him. And it's tough because I think even people that are Republicans are like, I just don't buy Joe being that radical. It's the party. Like, I'd love, I, I've been saying it, I'd love to vote for a person. I'm not saying I would vote for Joe or Trump. I don't want to vote for parties. I don't. Parties, it, it's too much baggage, too much, too much interest that's, that has nothing to do with the people. It's like, ah, oh, I love this girl, but I don't want to marry her family. But you're getting her family. But her family's crazy, and they're going to cause trouble. And they're going to make a mess of everything. And my life is going to be a thousand times harder because of them. And they're, they're going to do crazy stuff. And they're going to be a drag on me. And they're going to get in the way of everything. And it's going to be all about them. And they're, they're going to pull 
us apart. And that's kind of what it's like. I watched a lot of the stuff that was the pre. And some of it, there's there's a lot of not just defund the police, a lot of abolish the police. There's a lot of let's not have borders. Let's take from the rich. And let's take as much as we can. There's a lot of stuff that you listen to and you're like, that is not where I want to take the country. Sorry, we can have a strong immigration policy and be welcoming. Right? We don't have to be one or the other. We can have smart tax laws, but we don't need to take as much as possible to pay for everything because everybody needs to have skin in the game. you got to ask yourself, and that's that's what I ask myself every day. I can vote for a person, but I can't vote for a party. You could marry the one that you love, and she's amazing, or he's amazing, but his mom's overbearing. She's going to be in your life 24-7. She's going to make everything hard. Her family's crazy, and her sister's going to be living with you, and I don't know if I want to do that. And they don't like me, and they're going to cause hell, and it's going to be drama. I might just give this one a punt. And it sucks. It does. It would be great if you could find the perfect orphan. (laughs) But you can't. And the parties are the things more, more than ever that end up blowing everything up because of special interest, special needs that they have to make sure that their groups, their lobbyists have to have all their stuff because they've been feeding at the troughs of these people and now it's their turn. Nah. It's tough. It's a tough thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. It's just, it's amazing. He did, look, I, I, I think he did a great job. I think he delivered what he had to deliver. The real campaigning is going to begin after Labor Day. And then it is going to be a sprint. The difference is, is what's Biden going to allow? The coronavirus has given him a ton of cover. He doesn't, go ha- he doesn't have to go out and campaign everywhere. He's got a built-in excuse of, I'm going to be responsible, and I'm going to limit where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do so I don't put people at risk. And while some of that may be true, he can also use it for cover to say, I'm going to also limit my risk and exposure to gaffes and flubs and who knows what else. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. My pillow. Sleep well at night. BOGO. Buy one, get one free. What is that? Well, it's exactly what I say it is. You buy one, you get one free of any of their products. Whether it's the My Pillow, the 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 Stone Go Anywhere pillow, the the Giza sheets, the towels, the mattress toppers. You buy one, you get one free. On top of that, you get a 60-day money back guarantee. Means if you don't like it, send it back. They refund you in full. It's that simple. You get a 10-year warranty. Something goes wrong within 10 years, they sort it out, fix it for you. And it's all made right here in the USA. You go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Benson when you go to the new radio listener special. You're going to get a chance to take care of, you know, uh, take advantage of the BOGO. Plus, on the way out, if you order Mike Lindell's book, he's going to ship everything for free and give you a $25 gift card towards your next purchase. MyPillow.com. Promo code is Benson. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Give me a bowl of chili with plenty of peppers. One Mexican hot burn. Why don't you mugs grow up? 
The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. Delta has banned Robert O'Neill after he tweeted a maskless selfie while sitting in his seat. The image included the caption, I'm not an expletive. Delta Airlines says in a statement that every customer is required to wear a mask and failure to comply can result in losing the ability to fly Delta in the future. O'Neill responding last night, tweeting, thank God it wasn't Delta flying us in when we killed bin Laden. Yeah, he is the guy, by the way, that killed bin Laden. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. My my local show that I do, my uh, on-air partner is the biggest hypochondriac in the world. And I'm talking... We joke about him all the time, what kind of hypochondriac he is. He would, he wants everybody to wear a mask and then the, the hazmat suit and then, you know, being a bubble. It's, it's all like he's super hypochondriac. He said about this, I don't care if that guy doesn't wear a mask. <laughs> he goes, I'll sit next to him without wearing a mask. Now, Delta probably had no idea who the person was. It's just funny, though. Because, like, I was thinking, oh, hey, do you know that guy killed Bin Laden? Well, he can fly the plane if he wants. <laughs> Don't care. Chad. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to wear a mask. You do. Still, we should have a little forgiveness, which is hard in this country. We don't have forgiveness. You know, yesterday I posted something about Tom Brenneman, who was the baseball announcer who used a homophobic slur when he thought he was all fair. And he was caught, apologized immediately, and has been suspended. Fox dropped him from their NFL coverage on the weekend. I don't know what's going to happen to him. And I asked, do we live in a world where there is forgiveness? And everybody's like, well, he needs to be fired. And I, I said, he's going to be. I don't know what the Reds will do with him because his father was a huge part of the organization for years. But I talked to several people, including my on-air partner on my other show, a local show, who is very good friends with him because he was the Diamondbacks announcer for, oh, I think, well over about a decade or so. And he's like, I never saw any of that. I never heard any of that. I, I don't know, you know, what's changed or if it was just something stupid that somebody said. I, I, I don't. He goes, I don't know. And I said, well, you know, it's it, he's got he's got to go. I get that. And they're going to, you know, I don't know if I'm the Reds. I think you go, you know, it's like it's a hostile work environment. He said something stupid. He said something hurtful. He said something awful. We can all agree on that. And the question is. Is it a hostile work environment? Is this a one-off, or is there stuff going on behind the scenes? And I think in this day and age, we we tend to just say, this is who this person is. And in s most of the cases, that's not true. But that's what he's always going to be remembered for. And I don't know if he'll work again. There's a possibility he may never work again. And the amount of people are like, good. And I'm like, that's... Why can't there be room for forgiveness? I'm curious. Why isn't there, there, there room for, for people to go, you know, he should go, but he should have a chance. Because if there's no chance at redemption, then what are we doing? You know, we were just talking about the, the Democrat national convention, if we've been talking about it, but the stuff that goes on that you don't see because you're not streaming it. It's, it's available. And one of the people that was speaking was a, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to get this right, black Vietnamese, transgender, non-binary, mermaid, king, queen. I think I got that right. And the king, queen, mermaid is calling for the abolition of police to have no prisons. And I'm thinking... What do you expect? People are... It's so there's no retribution for anything. At all? There's no responsibility in anything? And it's funny because the same people that would say that person needs to get fired will tell you that 
people need a second chance in other positions. And that the reason that they've done something wrong is usually because they were a victim of so many other things and it's not about their choice. And, and, and that's the stuff that drives people crazy. Look, I don't know if he should get a second chance. I don't know the guy. Could be the worst human being on earth. He could have said something really, really hurtful and stupid. And that could not be who he is. Because at the end of the day, unless you know him, you live with him, you work with him, you see him, you have a relationship with him, working or otherwise, you don't know what's in that person's world or heart. None of us do. I just know me. I don't want to live in a world where there is no opportunity at second chance. That includes people who are in prison. And I'm not talking about people who are murderers and killers. But I'm talking about people who who need to have a second chance and deserve a second chance. And I would like to think there is second chances for people. And it's sad that we live in a world where we seem to pick and choose who gets second chances and who doesn't get second chances. And one person said to me yesterday, well, he did it on the job, so that's why he should go. And I said, well, other people have done it. Yeah, but they weren't on the job. I said, so that makes it okay? Okay. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Joe Biden shares John Lewis's belief that every vote matters. Personally, I plan to follow the example of six current cabinet members, Vice President Poonce and President Trump himself, and vote by mail. To find out everything you need to know about mail-in ballots, text VOTE to 30330. That would be the president's golf score if he didn't cheat. Okay, look, I'll admit that was a little nasty, but we all know he's a cheater. And I'm proud to be a nasty, nasty woman. That was awful last night. It was. That was not their best moment. It was uh, Julie Louis Dreyfus. For those of you guys who don't know, it was just not. It was just not the the best moment they had. Kind of fell flat, and I think there was an audience there. It would have still fell flat. Joe did well. At the end of the day, he did well. It was a good speech. It was a strong speech. But it wasn't transcendent. And when you set the bar low, Van Jones talked about it. The bar was set low. And he hit it out of the park. That's like... So what you're telling me is he's you know he you're hoping he's a major league baseball player but you're letting him play at Williamsport where they <laughs> where they play you know little league baseball and he happened to hit a slow pitch over the fence that's kind of where the ball bar was set I I thought it was a good speech I thought it was a solid speech I gave it an A minus It's tough to get an A it's the you're never going to get an A plus because part of the A plus is is the crowd participation And there wasn't any. Part of it is because you can surge and take their energy. And when you don't have that, it's hard to have that. I thought he did a good job, but it's a teleprompter. It is years in the making, literally years in the making. And he's had months to craft and script a majority of it based on who he is. And over the last few days and where they went, they crafted even more because they got to the point where it became the I hate Trump and I think he wanted to stay as far away from that as possible. You have to mention Trump and how you are going to be different than him, but it can't be 
spending your 25 minutes talking about what an awful human being he is and then hoping people will vote for you based on the fact that you suck less than him. In this dark moment, I believe we're poised to make great progress again. We can find the light once more. I believe there's only one way forward. As a united America, united in our determination to make the coming years bright. Are you ready? I believe we are. For love is more powerful than hate. Hope is more powerful than fear. And light is more powerful than dark. This is our moment. This is our mission. May history be able to say that the end of this chapter of American darkness began here tonight. American darkness. Why is it American darkness? It's not. We're going through a time. We're going through something that we haven't gone through. Let's be real. As bad as this is, this isn't the pandemic that killed anywhere between 12 and 50, 80, 100 million people. This isn't the same thing. This is nowhere near the same thing. So let's just, it's bad because of what it's done to the economy. It's bad because it has killed people. But it's not the same. And Trump hasn't helped it. But we live in the, we never put things in perspective. Like this is, this is funny. Andrew Yang, who kicked everything off last night. I like Andrew. I think he's a good dude. I think he's, if I was, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You're like, we need that guy in our cabinet. We do. Something about him. He looks at the future. He is a guy that I think is really somebody that we could, we could use his ideas that will actually help shape things in where we're going. But he kicked everything off. Hello, America. I'm Andrew Yang. You might know me as the guy who ran for president talking about math and the future. That future is now. The pandemic has accelerated everything. If you're like me and my wife, Evelyn, you don't know if your child's school is going to reopen this fall. 72% of Americans believe that this is the worst time we have ever experienced. 42% of the jobs that have been lost will never return. We are in a deep, dark hole, and we need leaders who will help us dig out. I have gotten to know both Joe and Kamala on the trail over the past year. They will fight for us and our families every single day. Really? It's the worst time ever? Well, in our lives. It's really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I, most people are still working. They're stressed. They're not sure. But even with unemployment at 15 to 20 percent, depending on where you live in the country, some have it worse, how your state handling it or not handling it. The reality is most of us are still working. There's going to be some tough times financially for some people. But this isn't something that you've done to yourself this is something that's happened and it's just how do we get through it how do you adapt sometimes it's about perspective you know i've been the perspective is very real and and i've had several people who who said this week they checked themselves on the local show i do out here it's our children's hospital we're raising money for them this week normally we'd spend two or three days in the hospital raising money and telling the story of what the hospital does and charging but the kids come there and these are kids that are seriously kids come here from all over the country it's one of the top children's hospitals we can't do that obviously and there is a perspective because we get so caught up in everything that sometimes we do need to check ourselves myself included and yesterday you know, it's tough because we'll be doing our, our, our show and then we have to stop down. And, you know, you're you get reminded of stuff. And we played a a vignette of a little girl uh, who died. And they, you know, it, it was just tough to listen to her because her name is Maisie and she died. <clears throat> and it was tough because you listen as a parent. Couldn't even imagine something like that. Right? As we sit here and talk about politics and BS, and I always say I don't, I, it matters so little in the overall scheme of things in your day-to-day life that sometimes you have to check yourself and go, whoa. And she was sick. They spent several years fighting it. 
And when they said, look, there's nothing we can do, they moved to the hospice. And it was tough to listen to it and because the mom said she no longer wanted to be the, mer- the nurse. She just wanted to be the mom for the last couple days. And it puts it into perspective sometimes, some of this stuff. So we sit here and fight with each other. It's the worst time in history. You'd be surprised. It's, it's not. It's a sucky time at this moment. But the best time that we could ever have a moment like this is now. The best time we could go through something like this is now. And then when you think that your day sucks, that there's somebody else out there who's going through something. And I, and, and, and I, I get reminded of that. And I have to check myself. You get a lot of people that come after you doing what we do. My son always asks me, like, how do you do that, Dad? Like when people just, have, just, just don't like you and say horrible things. And I'm like, I don't, I have to, you have to sometimes remind yourself, it's like, why? Why are you the way you are? What happened? You're having a bad day. Yesterday, this guy tweets at all my stations and stuff and says, I'm a racist, I'm a pig, I'm an a-hole, fire me now, all these kind of things. And I'm like, okay. And one of my stations, he goes, "What what did you say? And about an hour later, he tweets back at me. He's like, "Hey, I took that down. I uh, I misheard something, and I, you know, kind of have a bad day. And I thought you said something that you didn't say, and and uh, you know, I totally apologize. And I'm like, no big deal. It's like sometimes in life, you don't know what people are going through. And the perspective we we in the politicians remember, fear is much easier than any of the other crap, right? If I can scare you." I can evoke, uh, evoke an emotion out of you. And I can paint a picture of what the other side's going to look like. Trump's going to paint a picture next week that if Biden's president of the United States and Kamala, that they're going to destroy everything, that it's going to look like Portland and Seattle everywhere, that there are going to be no police officers anywhere, that it is going to be, you know, it, it, and that it's free abortions and forced abortions, that it's, it, and that's not true. It's not reality. And the left has been painting a picture that if you give Trump four more years, that four years from now, your freedoms will all be gone. There'll be nothing left. He will never leave the office. Democracy will die. Again, not true. It's easy to paint the picture because you have to have a monster to fight. Sometimes you need to put it in perspective and say, they're putting a little mustard on it because they're trying to get me to do something. And the best way and the only way anymore that they know how to do that is to try to scare you. Put some perspective. Step back and go, hmm, yeah, that's not going to happen with Trump. He's not going to, if you got four more years, we'll still be here because I'm still waiting for the nuclear bomb drop. I'm still waiting for all of the things that you said was going to happen. And if Biden gets in, you put it in perspective and say, you know what? May not like his policies. I'm going to give him a chance. But we're not going to be Portland. We're not going to be Seattle. Because eventually, if stuff like that happened every single place, 24-7, we get fed up as a nation, we pivot. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us and text the program, HelloFresh. God, I love HelloFresh. It's delicious. I don't know what I'm going to have tonight. Not quite sure. Thinking, though. Thinking. Who knows? I'll surprise myself. The beauty is I don't have to think about it. I go home. I've got meals ready. All I have to do is cook them. It takes like 20 minutes. Delivered straight to my door every week. Contact free. I love the fact that I cook them up. It takes about 20 minutes. There's no. I don't have to worry about extra food because I have the right amount for the family. And it's perfect. Vegetarian, low-calorie, family-friendly options. I'm saving money, too. About 40% versus shopping at the grocery store. And the other thing is that I love is I don't have to think about it. I do so much. I leave the house at 2.45 every morning, give or take. I get home at 7 o'clock at night. I don't want to think about other things. I just want to be able to do. HelloFresh allows me to do that. You'll enjoy it. 22 chef curated recipes each and every single week. 
Simple and easy. In about 20 minutes, it's in your belly. Go to HelloFresh.com, America's number one meal kit company, and use the promo code Benson. You're going to save $80 off your first box, and they're going to ship it to you for free. HelloFresh.com, promo code Benson, to save $80 off and free shipping on your first box. HelloFresh.com, promo code Benson, Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. We were talking off air about what happens if Biden wins and what's going to go on. And if Biden's going to be the unifier, we're we're, going to tie this around here. First things first, I think Trump would just leave. And if I'm Trump, and it's tough for him because he's addicted like nobody's ever been addicted to to press and to media and to to all of these things. But I also think there's a portion of that hates it. I think he looks and yes, he loves it and he loves to be the troll and he loves to fight. But that can get tiring as well. And I think he would take a deep breath. I think he detox. And if I'm him, I don't do anything. I go hit golf balls. I do some more business deals. I do some of those things. And, you know, the guys off air, you know, they said, ah, no, no, he, he won't do that. I, I said part of that is because I think he thinks, look, you look at the media. What's the media have? What's a, what's a Biden presidency look like on the media side of things? What's it look like? It's not exciting. It's wonky at best. There's nothing that's going to be going on that's going to be spectacular. It's going to be paper pushing. A few speeches here and there. The the right side of the media world is going to try to say, you know, they'll, they'll pay. Look what's going on here, there. And this is what's happening in a Biden world. But the reality, gut check yourself, take a step back. It's not going to happen. The way that you think it's going to happen. What's the media going to do? Because you think MSNBC is going to tear apart, Joe? Or CNN? Do you think the coverage is going to be 24-7? Do you think he's going to be tweeting insane things? No. So you have to, you know, because the media, part of the media now is entertainment. You get paid per clicks. You get paid per views. You get paid for all of those things. So if I'm him, I say, I'm not going to give him that. I'm not going to be their cash cow. I'm not going to continue to give to them those things. I'll go to Miralago. I'll hit golf balls. I fly around on my plane. I'll hang out with my kids. We'll do those things. I don't, I don't, I don't need this. And then everybody's like, well, what about all the, are they going to keep coming for him? I said, no. If Biden's going to be a uniter, and that's what he wants to do, then he's got to do, you know, because everybody said, well, about the criminals, they're going to come for him. They can look at all these things. They're, they're not. Some will push for it. But Biden, if he's, presidential at all is going to look and say no we're not you're not you guys we're done you're dropping it we're not going to do this well we need to do this no if we're going to heal the country this isn't going to be the way to do it what did ford do pardon nixon why because he wanted to put it behind he wanted to heal the country he didn't want to going and doing something like that and continuing to come for him Trying to make there, there, if there is no there, there. It's, that's not going to do anything if it's about healing the country and and uniting the country. Just won't. Tell you what, though, I don't know what's going to happen in November. My gut says at this moment, if it was held today, I think Biden wins. But I also think that there's a long way to go. And I want to see what Biden does, how he puts up. With the next three months of campaigning, the next three, the one thing I'll say about Trump is he never stops. He goes and he goes. He's somewhere always. He's up early. He's doing all kinds of things. You may not like him, but there is never a position where he looks like he's about ready to run out of gas. His throat's never froggy. He's never looking. You look at Biden now. He, 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 he looks like he's already a little tired. This next three months is going to be interesting.
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program as well. Have a blessed, wonderful, amazing weekend. You do you. Be kind to each other. Stop fighting every once in a while. A little perspective from all of us is a good thing. We will do it again on Monday. As always, night-night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.